we're going to be talking about five sustainable practices to use when gardening. Uh, I'm going to start basically from when you start a garden all the way until how you take care of the garden. So number one, we have the layering method or the lasagna method. This is when you're doing a your raised bed or even when you do it on the ground. You can start off with layers of newspaper and cardboard. Once you have the cardboard and newspapers on the ground, you can water it to make sure it starts the decomposition process. And what this does is it helps suffocate the weeds so that once your garden keeps going, it won't produce more and more weeds because that, that layer of cardboard and newspaper on the bottom is suffocating it. After you water that bottom layer, you put on like rotten sticks, rotten logs, things that you find in your yard. You can just lay it across and then on top of that, you can put leaves, straw, grass clippings, any like natural things that you can find in your yard. This just helps add more microorganisms and increases the soil quality, increases the microbes. All those natural things are going down into the soil and then that will then help what you're growing grow even better. Number two, we have natural fertilizers such as coffee grounds, bananas, and eggshells. What I have here, I have some reused coffee grounds and these do particularly well with tomatoes because tomatoes like acidic soil. And so what you do is you just sprinkle it along the base and it helps acidify the soil because tomatoes like really high pH in their soil. And then also when the coffee grounds break down into the soil, it increases the soil quality. So it's a good way to fertilize your plants. Natural fertilizers really help with soil quality. Instead of using synthetic things, it's natural things that add vit certain vitamins, certain elements into the soil and increases the microbes, the microorganisms, increases the quality overall. It's also a lot cheaper because you can go make coffee, take the used coffee grounds, pour it on the tomatoes, and it helps. Eggshells provide calcium, which a lot of plants need. Tomatoes, peppers, and spinach really like eggshells, and then bananas can add potassium. And for bananas, tomatoes really like bananas, and so do peppers and flowers. All right, number three. Compost. If you make your own compost at home, it's a lot cheaper. It's natural things. You don't have to go out and buy it. Although some, if you're using it large scale, yeah, it makes more sense to buy compost because, I mean, it's hard to make a large amount of compost just from household, household items. Really? <laughs> so you can take your kitchen scraps and then just start composting it. And then once you have it, you can just put it on any of your plants and it'll help. She, you're being a bad boy. Also, with your kitchen scraps, you can feed them to the chickens, and then the chickens will turn it. <laughs> chickens will turn it into fertilizer for you as well. You can use their poop to help fertilize your plants, and that's just another way that your kitchen scraps can get used instead of just going in the garbage. I love you, but I don't want your teeth in my face or my arm. I'll return to filming in a moment. Fourth. Natural pest deterrent. There are a lot of things in your home that you can make into a pest deterrent instead of going out and buying pesticides, insecticides, because while those do work, it's not great to have chemicals on your food. So while you can do it, it will work. Um, there are a lot of natural ways that you can do it instead to make sure that everything stays natural. For example, companion planting. One of my favorite ways to do it. If you have tomatoes, you can plant marigolds, you can plant dill, you can plant uh, basil next to it, and it'll prevent squash bugs and hornworm. This doesn't always work. It's not a foolproof plan. If it doesn't, there are a lot of other ways that you can do it, such as getting a spray bottle, filling it with, I think, let me see, I wrote it down. Two cups of water, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and one teaspoon of dish soap. If you spray it on the plants, it will help deter those pests that are so annoying. The only bad thing about that, if it rains, if you water, it's not on the plant anymore. So it is something you're going to have to do consistently, but it can be very effective. We used to have some marigolds next to the tomatoes that we have out here. They all died. Um, not too sure if it got too hot. I don't think that's the case. I think they just died. I'm not really sure why. Another pest that is so very annoying are Japanese beetles. So what I learned at the farm that I work at is that with Japanese beetles, you either have to pick them off by hand and put them into a bucket of soapy water or you can put a bucket of soapy water in the garden and they will fly into it and they cannot get out, they will die. This can, I'm gonna post a picture after this, this can cause some unwanted casualties. But it does kill a lot of the beetles. Number five, rainwater collection. I'm gonna show you guys what we have here. All you have to do really is if you have gutters, you put a bucket, it doesn't even have to be a real rain barrel. I'm about to get attacked. It can just be a bucket. It could be um, a Tupperware bin. It could be a trash can. All you have to do is on the top of it, 
cut a hole, make the gutter go in the hole, and you're collecting rainwater already. It's so easy. You can see here we're actually collecting rainwater. Daryl, do you use this rainwater for anything? Uh, yeah. The pour on the plants. Uh, a little bit in the garden up front. Mm -hmm. You see how I did that up front? I just been using the rainwater for it. Oh, nice. Okay. Just see the gutter. Comes down and just drops it in there. Dip in, dip, uh, you can dip, uh, what am I thinking of? Oh, you can dip, dip, in, dip, dip a watering can into it and then water the garden. And some of the fancier rain barrels, they have spouts. Sir, fancier rain barrels, they have spouts on them you can attach a hose to. It's awesome. It saves you money. It is a natural way to water your plants. Rainwater is what they get anyway in the natural world without humans. So if you save rainwater, I mean, it's just, it's so much better. You can also use it for your animals. He could be watering the chickens with the rainwater and it'd be fine for them.